Hey, what's up guys? This is Stock Retail coming back to you. Uh, I'm just excited to give you a couple updates, talk about some things on my mind, um, share about the court t uh, call today. I listened into that um, at six in the morning, pretty much West Coast time here. Um, and talk about uh, some things that apes were right on and something we ought to celebrate. And then actually kind of a surprise topic for Shorty. I told you on Twitter, Shorty, that was coming. So have fun with that. Um, troll away, I don't care. Uh, before I move on, just having some fun here. You know, AMC not long ago had our 100th anniversary. Also, Warner Brothers not long ago had their 100th anniversary. You'll see why I'm going to kind of tie those two here in a minute. Just um, celebrating the partnership, really, between distributors and studios. AMC being the biggest distributor of all movies there is. Studios loving um, people who distribute their movies. Uh, one quick apology, too, to you guys. I'm going to try to talk a little louder today, but I'm on the road... Um, I'm in a hotel room right now with headphones, and so the headphones are my mic. I know I have tended to have a bit of a soft voice here on this YouTube channel. Got to work on some microphone issues. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. I'm trying to speak up a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully my hotel neighbors are either not in their room or, or just not bummed that I'm yelling through the hallway. Uh, maybe I'll get lucky and there's an ape next door and they'll find out uh, retail is, is next door to them and we'll meet. I don't know. Um, but so if I'm a little quieter today, I apologize, but I'm going to try to speak up a little bit for you. All right. Um, let's just start right off with, uh, we're going to get into the court updates. Obviously that's going to be, you know, really front of people's mind, but I'm just playing with that, um, hundred that apes were a hundred in on movies and we were a hundred, right. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, so the topics we'll cover today, the court call, uh, I'm calling this TV basically just our, you know, streaming versus theaters. Uh, and then the uh, fight that I want to talk about. Shorty, that is your topic, just for fun for you, uh, and we'll get there. So, notes from the call. Let's go over the court case itself and what I heard this morning, notes I took. You can go look um, on Twitter. I kind of live tweeted it, just shared what I was hearing um, and my a couple of personal reactions, though not much, mostly just some, some facts. Um, but here's what I heard. So first of all, normally, um, so I heard um, the chancellor or the judge say th uh, this would take 60 days. Um, and then, um, so actually, that's the first thing. So 60 days from, and by the way, from the time that we get a bunch of details, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, AMC's lawyers said, hey, we'd really like this to go faster. It would be great if AMC had access to capital sooner. If you've watched me at all, you know that I was... Um, for this vote, although I try to be, you know, conscientious of those who can have genuine disagreement. If you are shorty and you're just pushing against the vote, then I have no time for you. But if you're an ape and you had genuine reasons you were against it, that's fine. But um, the reason I was so for this vote was access to capital. The lawyers today talked about access to capital. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But they basically said, hey, it'd be really great if we could get um, AMC in a stronger position sooner and so that was their argument to the court uh, and they were kind of talking about a 45-day window so they're trying to basically speed this up by two weeks um, the official language of the settlement needs to be published so part of that was um, the judge and I, frankly guys I think she's kind of got a point and not kind of I think she's got a point and I think this is just legal precedent we don't have in our hands any real formal documentation about the settlement itself. So if you go look, um, I had a second video about the settlement a while back. I think I even just called it part two. And you can see I talked through the sort of how I view it as a dividend and receiving one AMC share for every seven and a half um, you own post reverse split. So really uh, 10 for every 75 pre reverse split, think of it like that. Um, <clears throat> so I go through that in more detail there if you wanna just see the math on how the settlement would work. Um, how the conversion works and all that. Uh, so I'm not going to cover that here, but we don't have like any kind of real sort of, let's call it legalese filing on that settlement um, that I've seen anyway. So um, what the court is basically saying is, listen, both the plaintiffs and the defendants, so the plaintiffs, set, that's Allegheny's um, lawyers, defendants, that's AMC's lawyers, um, you guys need to put out official documentation um, AMC's lawyers were offering ways to make that happen fast and get that in our hands. So they were saying, hey, we'll put it on investor relations on the site. We'll post an 8K with the SEC. Maybe they'll send us emails. They were, they were pushing pretty hard to go electronic, and I'll talk about why more in a minute. 
but so that you know, so when I talk about this 45 days or this 60 days, what I feel that I heard on the call this morning is the timeline starts from when we get that documentation. So we're not even in that timeline yet, um, although I could have gotten that wrong. So, But just somewhere between 45 and 60 days, give or take a little bit of time from now. Letters. Let's talk letters. So we've all been sending letters to share, um, in my case, my displeasure with this case that I want it thrown out. Um, some of you probably supported the case. We also saw Shlomo Zussman, um, if you know, you know, uh, supported the case while calling out um, their support of some YouTubers. I'm laughing because most of us believe that was a parody. Whoever you were, if that was you, job well done. I, I had a good laugh at that one. And I think you made your point, quite honestly. Uh, go look up the letter from Shlomo Zussman if you want to know more about what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the thing, though. We all were sharing our point of view with the court. Um, she's been reviewing those. But, again, her point was there is not an official... Um, filing really or this sort of settlement this notice we need and so her point would be none of us is actually responding to the settlement itself because we ha haven't had that documented um, <clears throat> so here's why that really matters um, we're going to all I shouldn't say all I really want to send a letter and I would strongly encourage all of you to send a letter and note here I'm saying whether you support or oppose this settlement um, I'll just be upfront with you. I'm going to support it, and then there'll be kind of a comma to that. It's not support, period. I'm supporting it, comma. I'd rather see the, co the whole case thrown out um, altogether. But I do not object to the settlement, let's put it that way. And if it moves us on, I do support it. And again, see my second video on the settlement for why there's a lot of positives to this feeling like a dividend to the AMC common shareholders. So um, you can see that. But here's the thing. Wait. Guys, wait until we get this filing, um, and and then, you know, I'll cover it here on YouTube, I'll cover it on Twitter, I'm sure many apes will cover it, we all like to share information with each other, and that's what makes us strong, so, um, but the point is, if you sent a letter now, it's kind of not going to count in this process, and then look at what I'm saying here on this third bullet. Um, not only should we wait until everything's official and we've been given the settlement so that the court feels like, okay, you're actually responding to an official settlement here, um, and I know you've been informed. They're, that's them protecting us, guys. They're just saying you need to be informed. You need to know what you're responding to. Okay. They're also going to just say, no more, no more Shlomo Zussmans. You're going to have to use your real legal name. You're going to have to show at least the last, at least so far this is what they've proposed, the last four digits of your actual account. Um, a screenshot of your shares uh, and prove that you own shares. Now, my thought um, as I listened to the call was you don't necessarily have to reveal your whole position. I know some are sensitive to that. I mean, if it was me, you could even like, for instance, black out all but the last, uh, you know, one or two digits of your shares and, you know, just show those last four of your um, brokerage account and it would show maybe, you know, which, you know, it's a screenshot um, she was suggesting that shows like, are you with TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Schwab, Weevil, whoever you're with, Fidelity. So essentially we're going to have to have a little bit of a process where we prove we're shareholders. Well, this is another reason you need to wait for the letter because um, the lawyers are going to talk some more and basically have a whole process that they're going to propose uh, for how we even do this. So we're going to wait to need to have the, um, the language of the settlement and we're going to need to wait until the lawyers in the court agree uh, here is how we prove that we're shareholders. And this way, there are no frauds. You know, imagine Shorty, you know, we know they pay bots on Twitter, bots and, and sock puppets. Uh, imagine them, you know, stuffing the ballot, as it were, and sending in a bunch of negative letters that attack Adam, right? So to, to avoid that, the judge is saying you're going to have to show that you, you own shares. So I, I applaud that. I think that makes plenty of sense. I get it. Um, so please wait. Um, I'm not saying you can't send a letter now, but I am saying if you want to really have a voice in this settlement itself, you are going to need to wait. And so as soon as we all have more, again, it's going to be on AMC's side, it's going to be, um, uh, oh boy, I forgot, but basically on investor relations, oh, maybe emails, um, there was some discussion about uh, uh, mail, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute too, and, and why they're trying to avoid that. All right, so let me review, re, um, move on to the fourth bullet. Uh, the plaintiff attorneys, so that is 
Allegheny's attorneys, they seem fine with this revised timeline, this faster 45 days kind of a thing. So I didn't hear anybody object to that. It seems like they're going to work on trying to make that happen. Um, so that you know, though, the court, um, the chancellor, she did not agree to it. She just didn't oppose it. She's giving the parties an opportunity to basically show that they can get all the work done in that amount of time and that we as shareholders have the chance to respond. Uh, okay, fifth bullet here. So that notice, that briefing, that has to be published online. I guess I've already kind of talked about that. Um, that's coming. The chancellor acknowledged, this is kind of cool, frankly. I like this. So she said, her words, unprecedented stockholder input. So we have been sending all those letters. We've been making our voices heard. She said multiple times, quite frankly, that she's realizing there is a level of engagement on AMC that she has not seen before. Guys, celebrate that. I think that's awesome. We are engaged shareholders. We are educated shareholders, and we should keep it up. I say we keep it up. She's acknowledging this. Um, and this is who we are as apes, right? We're saying retail has taken a seat at the table, and we are not going to give that seat up. So I'd say keep that seat, keep your voice, and let's follow this process. And I'm committed at least for this account, whether you follow me on Twitter or here on um, YouTube, I will do everything I can to get information to you as I find it as well. So a couple more things about the call. I said I would talk about the mail. So the lawyers talked about um, the standard in the past in general has been that we would get a mailing about, um, about this settlement. Uh, and that's that's kind of normal, like in a proxy vote or some other things, you, you, you might get something in the mail. But the lawyers for AMC said, hey, this is going to cost almost $3 million. So as me as a shareholder, I don't want to see AMC have to burn $3 million just to tell me how to voice in support of a vote I already voted for, right? That's ridiculous. Um, and so actually connect that to the bullet on the far right on this slide that uh, I thought this was really exciting. The lawyers for AMC confirmed they believe there's about 3.8 million of us shareholders. Let's say that again. There's about 3.8 million of us shareholders. That is really cool. So between the judge saying you guys are more engaged than anything I've seen and then you know there being that many of us, uh, retail is at the table with AMC and we aren't going anywhere. So I think that's really cool. But because there's so many of us, it would cost them $3 million to send something to us all in the mail. So um, AMC's lawyers were very, um, uh, they advocated very strongly for having an electronic process. And um, so whether you care about saving AMC money, whether you care about just maybe not, um, uh, you know, wasting natural resources with all that paper, whatever reason, I imagine most of us would be in support of the fact that we'd like for them to not have to mail these. They argued and they gave specific cases where there's some precedent for um, staying strictly electronic. So uh, I did not, not note those cases down, but they, they listed five or six cases in Delaware where there had been some strictly electronic process in the past. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be fine. Uh, that's the bottom line on that one. And then um, this middle point. So I'm seeing some people talk about something the lawyer said, and I want to give you my point of view. It's a point of view. It's an opinion. Um, they One of the reasons they gave for uh, saying they wanted to go f uh, in 45 days instead of 60 was that they wanted AMC to have access to capital. Right. I already mentioned that. Uh, and go to any of my videos about the vote. There's one in particular that talks about everything tying to the end game. I'd guide you to that one where I talk about access to capital. I talk about how this relates to, I believe, the squeeze, all of that. Um, okay. Some people translated what the lawyers said as, oh no, AMC needs cash fast. I did not hear it that way personally. So here's where I'm going to give you a point of view. I try to be careful on this um, channel, you know, to to stick to facts, to not ask you to trust me. Um, and so that's why I clarify when I'm saying, hey, this is opinion here. Um, frankly, anything on, on this channel and anything on any channel, you should be careful to question because we're talking about your money and your finances. Don't just let people on YouTube and Twitter tell you what to do with those. I'm here to share with you a point of view because I've done a lot of DD over two and a half years and I want to help educate. That's my heart. But you know, even if I have a good heart, I may not always be right. 
And then you know that there's people on the internet who don't have a good heart. So it's just always important that you research, make your own decisions. But so I'm going to share with you my point of view here. Um, I believe that they were speaking strategically. They were not speaking in terms of any kind of uh, nervousness. In fact, um, if I was to show you, you've seen on a couple videos, I've shown you how the box office is tracking this year. We're now even farther ahead of last year. We're something like, I don't know, $635 million or $640 million. Uh, the, the, US, the domestic box office is bigger than last year. Well, you understand that, um, and like this quarter so far, so the month of April, is about, I don't remember, well, the quarter is tracking to beat last quarter by like 60%. And I think the month of April also is like 60 or 70% above last April. I'd have to go back and look at that, but it's something way higher. Well, the point is, if the box office is that much bigger, that's that many more attendees who are also buying food and beverage and merchandise. We've also been buying popcorn. We've also got the credit cards out. Um, and then, of course, the box office itself represents ticket admissions for AMC. You know, they've got some market share piece of that. Well, all of that to say, I believe April has been cash positive for AMC. I do not believe AMC is burning cash right now. I believe they're generating cash. And I believe we're going to hear that, um, let's say, around August when we get to the Q2 earnings. I believe this is a very highly positive quarter in terms of cash flow. You know, you hear me say the word believe, that's a forecast, all of that. Um, but... I think it's pretty obvious if you just look at the numbers, quite frankly, and I don't even think it's really arguable that it's cash flow positive right now. So in a time when AMC, I believe, is generating cash, uh, no, I do not believe the lawyers are saying, oh my gosh, we'll run out of cash in 45 days. I believe anybody saying that is um, fear-mongering or clickbaiting, perhaps. But um, as for me, I believe AMC is generating cash right now. So, okay, why would they say, hey, we need to hurry up? Well, let's think about uh, some things that we know. And now I'm just speculating and tossing things out. So, you know, these are not fact. This is speculation. Uh, let's talk about Regal, right? We know that there are Regal properties potentially for sale. We know that Cineworld has had problems and is going through bankruptcy and has said there um, kind of was nobody to buy their properties. Well, we know that if AMC had cash, Perhaps they'd want to pick up some properties at steep, steep discounts because if you buy it that cheap, it's not that hard to turn it profitable, right? So uh, that's one speculation. Another one, well, I have long wanted AMC to merge with a studio. Uh, you might know that there's some old, there's like a Supreme Court case that expired recently that was kind of separating studios and uh, movie distributors, you know, theaters. Well, that case expired a while back. You can go all the way back to 2021. I'm even going to show you later where I've been talking. I, I would love to see a merger with AMC and a studio. Well, you got to have a lot of money if you're going to do a merger, um, especially if you're the buyer. So there's strategic reasons, is my point, that don't have to be panic reasons why AMC needs cash. But you also understand sometimes you strike while the iron is hot. And, uh, you know, you need cash at the right time. Sometimes timing is everything in life. So I believe that's why they'd like to go fast also um, is more of a strategic reason. But, you know, that's an opinion. All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to talk a little bit and kind of switch gears here about we knew. Um, you're going to see I'm going to share basically, I'll call it receipts. So these are old tweets of mine going all the way back to 2021 on some stuff that we are now proving out to be right. Um, I'm sharing my tweets because those are just the ones I remember. You know, it's easier for me to remember stuff that I shared. Um, I by no means was alone here. So this is not a brag about me. This is about apes as a whole. I knew these things in some cases from my own research, in some cases from talking to other apes. So just take this as apes knew, not as like me, my account, I knew. But I also share this because I think it's a time in history where we need to be looking at everything the media has been telling us and start noticing, especially if there are accounts who have established a pattern over several years of telling uh, lies, misinformation, falsehoods, and then if there are other accounts who have a pattern over several years of getting things right, it's time to start questioning who we listen to. So, what did we know? Well, here's a tweet from today, I believe, from Warner Brothers. Um, actually, it's from someone talking about Warner Brothers at CinemaCon and saying that Warner Brothers has said they're not really interested in making movies for streaming anymore, that they're basically done making movies that go straight to streaming. They're only going to make movies for theaters. That is big news, guys. If you're invested in a movie theater stock and the owners of HBO Max, obviously they've, they've kind of been rebranding that, 
are saying, we're not even sending movies straight to our own platform anymore. We're going to send them to theaters, and then they'll go to our platform. Whew. If you own a movie stock, I think that ought to make you happy. All right, how about Sony? Sony, I think this was yesterday. Yeah, you can see the timing of this tweet. Sony CEO Tim Rothman says, streaming doesn't create movie stars, only global theatrical hits. So you got the big studios saying, it's all about the theaters. I'm going to even be showing you more. So here's the thing. That's the last two days. Well, here's some tweets from me from July of 2021. And in a minute, I'm going to show you some that are even older. So here was when Netflix was sending a, a movie to theaters. They were kind of experimenting back then. You know, this one wasn't very big. And, and I'll just be honest about that. But the point was they were, they were kind of nibbling at it and, and checking it out. Um, and so, you know, at that time, the mainstream media obviously was telling us um, basically movie theaters were dead and... We were saying, hey, hold on, Netflix is sending uh, movies into theaters. And at that time, I was already telling you that there would be more coming. And, and look at my language, too. Hey, I wonder if people realize this is a future trend. This is two years ago I was telling you this. Um, a follow-on tweet to that, I was saying, hey, are streamers aimed at aiming at becoming studios? Well, what do you know about Apple and Amazon this year? Have you seen their announcements, right, that they're each, each spending a billion dollars in the year on uh, movies, right? So we knew this back then. Are streamers aiming at becoming studios? And, um, you know, I have some background in strategy. There's a reason I kind of could connect these dots and understood, um, you know, I used to even be part of, in some cases, planning like five years out at a big company. So um, I just think that way, and I could see this coming. And meanwhile, the media was telling you and Shorty was telling you, no way, they're going bankrupt. So it is really time to go back and check the receipts of accounts who've been telling you negative things about movies, and then to check the receipts of the accounts who got it right. Here's more. August of that same year, I'd said Netflix was experimenting with putting in films in theaters. Um, also, and I said they, so Amazon and Apple, know that a film isn't Oscar eligible unless it has a theatrical run. Well, again, what have we seen now? Now Amazon and Apple are spending a billion dollars each uh, on theaters. Well, let's look at some more. It wasn't just us, right? It wasn't just Ape saying this. We were doing research and understanding what was happening. Here was Sony, again Sony. So, um, you know, I just showed you Sony saying it takes theaters to uh, theatrical movies to make stars. Well, here was Sony in August of 2021. So if we were paying attention and we were ignoring everybody else, in August of 2021, here's Sony saying their core of their strategy the very core of their strategy was preserving and protecting the exclusively theatrical window. Listen, guys, Sony has Spider-Man, right? Sony has a whole lot of other big movies, too. They were saying they were going to be protecting the theatrical window, right? So who was telling you otherwise? Time to think about that. August of the same year, August of 2021, um... Actually, sorry, repeat of that tweet, mistake there. We'll keep moving. September of 2021, Netflix had the Don't Look Up show. Now, that um, was not in theaters much, but it was in theaters. And, you know, my point was that streaming needed theaters and not the other way around. And, boy, I had some people come at me a couple different times on that. Um, and then look at what I said, same tweet thread, watch Prime come next. So... I'm going to show you in a minute some examples of where we were right. Like we said Amazon Prime. This is in 2021. Amazon Prime was going to be putting movies in theaters. I had some people say I was crazy. Well, who's crazy now? And look, Disney um, was moving to theatrical exclusives. Warner, I had said, would start in January. We'll come back to who kind of told us about that with Warner as well. Who actually beat me to the punch on that one? Actually, we're already there. So here you go, Shorty. This one's for you. I am going to show you apes in the middle of you being convinced Adam is some hedgy. By the way, I did a whole video on that. You've got three years since apes, apes have been around of behavior from Adam that proves his character. You can go find that video of mine. You know, it says like, is he a hedgy plant or not? Um, but now I want to show you something else. It's an angle I haven't covered before. And as I went back to look at my receipts, I was discovering things about him that I had forgotten. Even I had forgotten these. Here is, before any of those other tweets of mine, May of 2021. So I want you to go back two years ago. 
This, this is Adam talking in an earnings call. If you've seen me on Twitter, you know that sometimes I live tweet just kind of notes as the earnings call is going on. So here was one, May of 2021. Obviously early days, interesting because it's right before a pretty big run you guys all know about. We had an earnings, earnings call. Um, by the way, you can see the timing too. May 6th, we're about to have an earnings call, May 5th. So that's just kind of standard that we have that Q1 earnings call. But look at what he said. He said he was partnering with streaming platforms to balance theater and big marketing coming on theatrical release. So what he was saying is he was working with the streaming platforms to get content into theaters. Say that again. He was working with the streaming platforms to get content into theaters. Now, if someone says they're going to do something and then they do it, and they do it really well with good results, that's someone I start listening to. But you're being told he's actively fighting against us, right? Well, I'm gonna show you in a minute the results. He said he was doing it. It turns out he did do it, and he did it well, and we made a lot of money off of it. I, I'm pretty sure that means you should trust him. That's my point of view, but let's see more. By the way, fun note, same earnings, same uh, uh, call. I noted there that there were 3.2 million of us investors as of March 11th, 2021. And Adam was telling us we own more than 80% of the company. That was 3.2 million of us then. I just told you how they confirmed today. There's 3.8 million of us now. I've had plenty of people troll me over the years telling me there's way less shareholders now. People have left. People are gone. There you go. There's 3.2 then. There's 3.8 now. All right, hey, what else has he been doing? So I just showed you May. How about August? That was the next earnings call. You know, a little bit ago I said, hey, come back around August this year for the Q2 earnings that I believe are going to be positive. So this was a Q2 earnings call, August of 2021. I'm noting what Adam's saying. Reminder, AMC worked close, worked a close partnership with Universal. You know I'm showing you Mario here, right, guys? AMC worked a close partnership with Universal on theatrical windows. Adam was fighting for us to have theatrical exclusive windows. Adam was. Him specifically. Uh, and then also, Adam announcing, all Warner Brothers movies in 2022 will have a 45-day theatrical window only. Adam saying, he's in active dialogue with every major studio and hearing considerable support in Hollywood. Who was out there fighting for you, apes? Who was out there working with the studios to get them to support theatrical windows. I have been a leader in business and I've been a leader in um, nonprofit as well. I was on the board of a nonprofit for five years. There is something a leader has to do which is called casting vision. Sometimes other people can't see what you see yet and you have to help them see the vision and you have to call them to it. Here he was, August 2021, I just showed you before, May 2021, he was out there casting a vision. If you guys commit to theatrical windows, you're going to make money, we're going to make money, and the apes are going to win. He told us he was doing it, he did it, and I think you see the results right now. That's why I put Mario up here, that is universal. Don't come to me telling me he's taken my company down when he's been the one out there fighting for my company. I stand with him. I do, in the strongest possible terms. Let's keep going. May of 2022, here's another earnings call. Adam, I'm in conversations with various mover, movie makers, serious conversations with some very well-known studio executives and directors. He goes on to praise Hollywood Studios and thank them for theatrical exclusives. You know what was out at that time? I'm showing it to you right here. Top Gun Maverick, one of the top movies of all time, and you know Tom Cruise was very committed, and Steven Spielberg has since said, hey, you basically saved theatrical. Guys, he was out there fighting for us the whole way. Next time Hedgie says he's in the pocket of Hedgie. It's Hedgie telling you that Adam's in Hedgie's pocket. you got to figure out who you're going to listen to. All I know is receipts, 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 and results, results, results. I'm sticking with that. So we knew Adam fought and here we are, right? So here was on um, a CNBC show. This was uh, Paramount Pictures. Obviously they were talking. This was around the same time. You can see this is May 31 of 2022. 
at the bottom of that shows there. Um, this is the CEO of Paramount on releasing Top Gun in theaters. The films that we make that get released in theaters theatrically with a big motion picture marketing campaign actually are more powerful on streaming. Think about that for a second. And this is just obvious, and I'm going to come back and show you how I knew this strategically before as well. When a movie is in the theaters and then goes to streaming, the people who own that streaming platform benefit. Say that again. If I own a streaming platform and I first put a movie in theaters, then I put it on my platform, I actually do better. Look at him in his own words. The films that we make that get released in theaters theatrically with a big motion picture marketing campaign actually are more powerful on streaming. Let me go back. Let me go back and show you Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers no longer has any interest in doing direct to streaming movies. Connect all this guys. The studios are saying nuts to this. We're going to theaters first. They've been making money on it. Meanwhile, Adam said in May, Adam said in August, and then we see as it keeps going, the guy was out there of 2021, right, fighting for us, and then here's May of 2022. He was working with studios. He was working with actors. I hope you saw when Maverick premiered, it was in London at an Odeon, and Tom Cruise stood next to Adam. He knew who's been fighting for theaters. I don't ever want to hear any of that other garbage again. Bring it, Shorty. Bring it. So, remember Glass Onion. I think this movie did like $15 million. I want to say in a week. It could have been two weeks. Um, it, it, this here says, you know, they were kind of considering 45-day re theatrical release. They did not. They only put it out a week or two. And I, But I think it did like $15 million bucks. I, I really want to say a week, but I just... I, I can't remember if I'm right about that. I will tell you right now, I, I'm a perfect case study on this. I missed it when it was in theaters. I didn't see it. Okay, My wife and I were curious about it, um, and the reason was it had all that buzz when it was in theaters. At the time, we had turned off our Netflix account. Um, we just have had some unexpected bills in the last year or so, and we've kind of leaned out our, our finances. And, you know, like you, I want to own as many AMC shares as I can. So we had leaned out our finances. We would turned off some streaming. One of those was Netflix. We would turned it off. We wanted to see this movie. So I turned on Netflix to see this movie when it made it onto the, the platform. But that only happened because it had so much buzz from theaters that we were like, oh, you know, we missed this one. We want to see it. And then we ended up leaving our account on for a few months. I've since turned it off. I'll confess that. But here's the thing. Netflix got like four months out of us. They never would have gotten if this had gone straight to Netflix. We, it never would have had the buzz. We never would have done that. So even there is another just sort of um, case example of how when they go to theaters, it creates a lot more attention, a lot more buzz, a lot more focus. You know, um, I, I kind of admittedly trolled Netflix a little bit a week or so ago. You could probably go find this. Um, in their earnings call, they had kind of said they weren't really interested in driving traffic to the theaters. And I just thought, man, that's just such short-sighted mi short and small-minded thinking. Because the very next day, or maybe it was two days later, you know, Paramount Plus had put the final of, um, gosh, guys, I don't know the show because I haven't been watching it. It's the Star Trek show. Is it Picard? Something like that. There's a couple uh, bigger Twitter apes who are going to probably get at me at that one because I've seen they love it. I think it's Picard. Enterprise, whatever it is. I used to watch Next Generation when I was a kid. I just never watched the more recent show. But the point is, a lot of you did because there were lines out the door at AMC theaters for the final episode of that. <clears throat> well, that's kind of the point, right? Like, think about the buzz, the hype, the marketing. Just because people were tweeting all these lines going out the door and their excitement and people were dressing up in costumes at the theater. Paramount Plus got a ton of free marketing out of that. So it's so short-sighted to like not think about what you could get out of being in theaters. Netflix will come around. They're going to realize. Um, here's some other examples, right? So I got to see Operation Fortune. Um, that's Amazon. Well, I got to see it in Seattle with Adam. That was a lot of fun. So there's you know Amazon Prime proving me right on that one. 
Paramount, you guys saw, they put out Yellowstone, and there was the other show, the Sylvester Stallone one. They did really well. That was a few million bucks um, showing just a couple episodes of not even a movie showing a show in theaters. If you don't know, so the far right is kind of cut off, but Magic Mike's Last Dance, uh, that was originally going to be straight to streaming for Warner. And they released it in theaters. I want to say it might have done like 26 million. I don't remember too well. But, um, you know, that's a mid-sized movie that was supposed to go to streaming. And they said, whoops, never mind. We're going to put, put it in theaters. I'm dunking a little bit here because we were right. And it feels good to be right as much as I've been trolled and, and attacked the last two years. But I'm also sharing with you, it is knowable to know the direction an industry is going if you're paying attention and if you listen to the right voices and you don't allow yourself to be gaslighted. Adam himself told you this was coming. I told you this was coming and other apes told you this was coming. Now ask who told you this was not coming. Meanwhile, so that you know, so if that's built me some credibility, um, I'll tell you what I think is happening to the industry. So I, I worked, I told some of you, or I've told anyone who's followed my, my channel for a while, you know that I worked in a Dow Jones level company for, for 21 years. Dow Jones just means, you know, when you look at the stock indexes, there's the NASDAQ, there's the S&P, there's the Dow. Um, so there's 30 companies that make up the Dow Jones index. So what I'm really saying is one of the kind of big 30 companies in the country. I worked there 21 years. I have some experience, among other things, in um, market segmentation channels. I don't think this is too different. Think of it as like the supply chain of movies or the supply chain of content even, let's say, and something called IP, you know, intellectual property. Um, these guys, you know, they spend a lot of money. You got to pay writers, you got to pay actors, you got to pay grips, you got to pay, um, gosh, I don't know who's building the sets and you've got to pay maybe location and traveling fees and just there's there's all kinds of you know, marketing fees. Um, cameramen, whatever, directors, right? So it costs a lot of money to make us entertainment. And so you need to make your money back. And the way that you make your money back, in my opinion, is these five steps. And you'll notice what I believe is at the bottom, actually. So the first thing you do, and this is just one example of a tweet I did uh, about a year ago. I, I think I've got some even maybe older than this. Um, and certainly I have more recently. I believe theatrical is first. I think I've pretty much proved that until, you know, like that's just not even arguable anymore. Theatrical is the way you make money. Look at Mario. It's going to be, um, I don't even want to say what number it's going to hit. That thing just almost doesn't have a ceiling. We'll see. I don't know. Is it a, a one and a half billion? Is it 1.3? Is it 1.8? Uh, is it two? I don't know. It's going to be well over a billion dollars. Let's put it that way globally. You know, that doesn't happen if they put that straight to Peacock. That, that's just not happening. So, Theatrical clearly is where you go first. By the way, this also fights piracy. There's a lot of studies, you can go out and find this, that show that um, for streaming, piracy is way up um, over time. But if you go to theatrical, do you want to watch a movie that someone recorded with their phone? Like that's the only really way you're going to pirate, for the most part, um, out of theatrical. You know, I don't want to watch that. So generally, you go see it in the theater or you don't see it. So it kind of heads off piracy. Second thing, then, is paid rent. So, you know, uh, when Maverick first was done in the theaters, uh, if I recall, maybe that's a bad example, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of movies that don't go straight to somebody's platform. You've still got to rent them for, like, 20 bucks in some cases. Um, in other cases, maybe it's 5 bucks. But the point is you have to pay to watch them. And then, after you can rent it for a bit, maybe you can pay to rent or pay to buy. All right, just think the old days you know, DVDs or before that, videotapes. You know, movies would release stuff before it went on cable. This is not that different. It's not like the industry has changed really that much, in my opinion. So there's theatrical, then you can rent it, then you can rent and buy it. Finally, there's owned streaming. So that's like Maverick being on Paramount+. Plus. That's like Minions, Rise of Gru being on Peacock. So you put it on your own platform. Well, that draws you subscribers, right? So now you're making money. Look at how they're milking money out of every step. That's the point. You've got this IP you created. You want to maximize it. That's just normal business. You're trying to maximize it. And you don't maximize it by going straight to streaming. And you definitely don't maximize it by letting Netflix have it um, or Amazon Prime or somebody like that. It's your IP. You want to bring subscribers to your platform. 
Well, this puts Netflix in a real bind, in my opinion. So I've been calling them the value channel. You'd see some tweets from me over time saying um, they're kind of becoming maybe the Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, you know, um, those are kind of like value channel stores, right? You go there for a discount and they have their place. They're great. Um, you know, Netflix has a lot of really good content. I really like Netflix. Do not hear me wrong. I am not trolling them. I really like them. I think they have awesome content. But in terms of movies, if I want to see Maverick, I'm not going to Netflix. If I want to see, you know, a big Batman movie, that's going to be on HBO Max because that's Warner Brothers. Just pick whatever big, you know, Mario's going to end up being on Peacock. I don't know what Netflix is going to have. And eventually Netflix would have to pay someone else for their property to show it. But by the time they do, it's three, four years old, right? They're going to rotate old movies in. Um, so that's the point. That's the value channel. They have a place, but I would imagine they can't charge you a premium for that. That's the point of value. They're going to have to, uh, you know, have members who pay less. So I really think that Netflix is stuck in my opinion, which means they'll have to act like a studio and send movies to the theater. Or they just say, you know what, we're not, we're not a movie studio. We're just going to do TV. And then they're kind of almost more like a cable channel at some point. I don't know. We'll see. This is just one guy's point of view. But uh, the point is, the studios so far are following the path that I said a long time ago. Uh, I think it's playing out. While we're here, uh, I can hold, this is all the way back to April of 2021. I know I had said this um, as far back as March, at least. I, I've got a document even that I had done some DD on something else. Um, I have long wanted AMC to merge with a studio. I believe so. You know, we just talked about how to make money with IP. Well, the other way you make money in business is you go vertical, um, which means you're keeping margin in house. So for example, what if AMC was merged with, you know, somebody who makes a movie like, I, I just love Kong, right? So that has a special uh, place in my heart because it's the first movie I saw when we reopened for in my state from COVID. Um, and obviously Kong, I mean, that's right. It's about the apes. So we got another Kong movie coming next year. Imagine if AMC was like, uh, owned the studio that made that. And now, you know, instead of giving a cut back to the studio of your tickets, you're keeping the entire portion. And when other theaters show your movie, you're getting a portion of that from them. So I, I kind of think there's some interesting options there. That's why I brought that up at the beginning of the call to that Supreme Court case that's gone. So just showing you in case, I guess in this case, in case I end up being right in the future that I've been talking for more than, than two years, um, about the possibility uh, of maybe mergers and acquisitions. It's why I was pro uh, voting for more shares in 2021. It's part of why I was pro this conversion and reverse split now. I want this company to have access to capital to be able to do really strategic things. Um, I just showed you how Adam has fought for us the whole way through, um, and this is honestly non-negotiable. Like, I'm just showing you facts. He worked with the studios on protecting money for theaters and it worked like there's just no arguing about that and so here i was back in april of 2021 look at this last sentence that i said two years ago at this point i don't know why apes don't see adam is anti-hedgy which means he's pro ape so history shows apes knew this was coming so maybe just consider who has credibility um, adam told us what he was doing and he delivered exactly that Hollywood has shown partnership with distributors. My battery's about to die, so I'm going to work on this. Um, that's all, guys. Slam dunk. Let's go.